Welcome to In My Bag with Backpack Jeff, where we connect with ordinary people doing extraordinary things. I got a special guest here with me today, the founder of Poet Life, the host of the Poet Life podcast, man. Somebody who is literally revolutionizing the poetry game. Mm -hmm. Special guest, man, my man, Christoph. How you doing, man? What's up, bro? You doing good? Man, I can't complain, man. All is well. All is well. Happy New Year to you, man. Happy New Year, bro. It's almost old now. It's, it's February. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. We definitely getting in there, man. Um, so, man, I, I want to get right into it, man, because yeah. when when I first came back here to the DMV area, man, and people were talking to me about uh, about poetry uh, and about, you know, uh, me wanting to kind of, you know, put myself out there as a poet, you know. I was asking myself, who are some people that I should talk to? Who are some mm -hmm. people that I should connect with? And your name was definitely one of the names that I was told that, yo, you should connect with this guy. He's doing amazing things. He's doing dope things yeah. in the poetry realm, man. Um, tell us a little bit about some of the things that you are doing in poetry. Oh, man, I'm glad you asked. And when you came to, well, I guess came back to the area, folks were telling me about you. You know, we, out, we <laughs> both of us have mutual friends, you know, Orville the Poet and others. And uh, what we have going on over here pretty much, man, is just letting people know that poetry is powerful, man. And and so what I wanted to make sure I, I, I did was create something that I was looking for when I was younger, right? I'm 38, and for 30 years, I've been looking for a way for poetry to be my career. Right? Okay. So I couldn't find it. And so I said, I have to create it. Right. Right. right? So I started off with um, a clothing line called Poet Life Gear. And so this is where this starts off, right? And um, and then it just started to evolve because the need was there. Right. You see what I'm saying? So initially I was just like, man, I go to these, to these open mics, but the poets get up there and perform in their work uniforms and right but if you think about it rappers have their uniforms they got the gold chain and they got the baggy right. whatever it might be the singers have their uniforms you know they're they're dressed to a t whatever but the poets uh they don't necessarily have a, a a uniform if you will okay right but imagine if you up performing and you see and you see a a, a, a poet that has a hat that says poet life a shirt that says uh, one of their lyrics on their poem, I'll be sitting in the crowd like, man, he's serious about his craft. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, because it, I mean, because it, it's it's more it's taking more ownership yes. in what it is that they're doing, man. And I know you are super big on ownership, and we're definitely going to get to that. So you said you're 38 right now, and you said for 30 years. So you knew from a young age mm. that you wanted to do poetry since first grade, man. Really? One of my teachers gave us an assignment to create a poetry book. When I say create, not just write poetry, but to create the binding, uh, staple the pages. Right, right. The whole first grade. <laughs> right. What is that, six, seven? Six years old, six, seven years right, old, so yeah. That project alone, like, just transformed my whole thinking uh, and my outlook on life. And so, what is that, um, 24, 25 years later, Look! Look what's happening. I'm on the couch with you, man. Man, and you've you've been in some places with some pretty amazing people, and that's definitely some of the things that I want to talk. Yeah. I also want to talk about. We're going to get to that a little later. So, who are some of the people early in your life that inspires you? Because at at six, seven, eight years old, I mean, you know, we're we're reading Dr. Seuss and right. you know stuff like that. Who are some of the the pioneers that kind of helped you along this journey of becoming who you are today? But see, that's the hard part, man. As it relates to the arts, I didn't necessarily have someone to kind of hold my hand and guide me through this uh, uh, artistic and entrepreneurial realm. You know, I, a lot of times I felt like an alien because I was the only one that was creative in that sense. Okay. You know what I mean? And I'm talking poetry, 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 but poetry wasn't. You know, cool. It it wasn't. It wasn't. Po it wasn't popular like it is now. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it, it stuck with me. It stayed with me. There was a time I asked um, a, a, an actual millionaire, "How can I make poetry my career?" He's like, "There's no money. There's no money in poetry. Just don't even. Just put that down." I put my pen down after that. Really? And what what possessed you to pick your pen back up? 
was it some event because i know for me when i when i was uh going in poetry and i had a certain event that mm-hmm. happened to me it wasn't until i went to a gala hosted the gala mm-hmm. sold my poem to a billionaire right. for three hundred dollars that put me back in the mind state to say that okay you know what this is for me and i know that i want to create a life um doing this or some very i want some this to be some variation of the life that i have so was it something that happened for you or to you that you can say you know what this kind of made me pick my pen back up you know what it was um i wrote a poem for everyone that has passed away in my family and had it be the obituary poem that's in the bulletin um or even uh recited it at at the funeral mm-hmm. right whether it be my my stepfather my grandfather my uncle and i was just seeing that wow this is this is this is not just for your career but this is for people you know what i mean this is a gift that i've been given and i can't take it for granted man and and because it obviously it's needed it's 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 not just can you write a poem and put it in in the back of the bulletin like no we need a word from you know from 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 i guess the god that that has given to 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 me right right and so uh i was just like okay i need to keep this going and even though i can't see up front whether or not this is going to go somewhere i got to keep it going yeah uh, you know a lot of times man they they have a saying you know you can drive from new york to california Mm -hmm. in the dark the only thing you need to see is the next 200 feet and you can get there safely and i think that's kind of what this journey is like man you know we don't we don't know ultimately uh, how we're going to get there but we know ultimately where we want to end up so that's i mean that's definitely a positive thing so you said um you said, you know, you wrote a poem for people in your family that have passed away. Now, I know you have a, a branch of the poet life called Fighting Cancer with Poetry. Right. Tell us a little bit about that. How did you come up with that? Again, uh, uh, a good friend of mine passed away. Um, mm-hmm. He was diagnosed at 18 with wow. osteosarcoma cancer, dealing with the connective tissues and bones. and th- Right. Right. And... Um, he fought for seven years and he passed away at the age of 25. And uh, again, I asked uh, the, uh, her, uh, my friend's mother if I could write the poem for his obituary. And she obliged. Um, I had to ask her to do something really difficult. And I said, uh, I just need you to talk to me about Justin. His name is Justin Islar. I need you to talk to me about him, like really pour out. Right. And that was really difficult for her because it was like right then, right, right. when it happened. And so I was able to translate her words into a um, first person poem uh, with him speaking it as if he were here speaking it. Oh, okay. You know, and um, because he didn't start writing poetry until after he was diagnosed with cancer. And I didn't know that he was so good. I thought he'd been writing for all his life. But she told me in that story that he wrote poetry after he was diagnosed with cancer. So that just told me that he found a place of peace, um, uh, a mechanism for coping, uh, uh, healing, you know, within. And and so I said to myself, you know, after I recited that poem at the funeral, if he could do that for himself, then other persons dealing with cancer and other things can do the same thing. Yeah. You know, I, I definitely agree with you. And you know what? We're we're in a space and we're in, a, we're in an era right now where poetry is becoming more popular, as we saw mm-hmm. in the re- most recent inauguration. Um, the young the young lady Amanda yeah. and I forget her last name Gorman uh, Amanda Gorman mm-hmm. right. Um, we saw that and then also seeing what um, Brandon Leak Brandon Leak did right on on America's Got Talent. We're seeing poetry move into mm-hmm. a life. And be get, uh, be birthed a life that it has not been birthed. Like that millionaire who told you, mm-hmm. you know, you can't make this a career is probably looking at himself now like somebody can probably make this a, a, a career. Exactly. And there have been some successful people who have done this yeah. as a career, man. And I think, you know what, uh, I think with what you're doing with mm-hmm. fighting, uh, fighting cancer with poetry, man, and I definitely support you in that. Um, w- so. I, I know things have changed right now because of COVID and stuff like that. Right. Um, how are you uh, 
uh, using technology, social media and stuff like that to continue to advance poet life mm -hmm. and the poetry community? You know, before COVID, and I mean literally days before the shutdown, we were we were preparing or prepared to go on an international tour, Fighting Cancer with Poetry Tour. Hawaii, Africa had the hotels booked, the flights booked, and so obviously we lost a lot of money. Um, but I truly believe in adapting and pivoting, mm -hmm. right? After I got over that, you know, um, I just said, okay. One, I have three daughters, um, six and under, right? And, and I'm one to be very present in their life, right? And so I said, okay, it's time to sit down. It's time to sit down. You was about to go travel here and there, and your family's here very young doing those pivotal years. Right. Right? So I just took it as God said, all right, calm down. Sit down. Right? Use what you have where you are. Okay. Right. And so, um, and, and we had the podcast at the time. And so, uh, um, that right there showed me how powerful technology and the internet was because we can still be international using the internet. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So we, we, we just use what we had cameras, cell phone, and, and, and didn't wait to get equipment and you know we just started you know and uh here we are now man poet life podcast is doing some some great things we just had lisa nichols i was i, I was definitely going to get to that but talk, oh, talk to us man. about that man how, how do you connect with a uh, lisa nichols be and the the story of this is so interesting because mm -hmm. it's like you know, when, when you're when you're walking in your purpose and you're walking on your path, man, mm -hmm. the right people will begin to gravitate towards you as long as you stay consistent. Exactly. I think I was on your podcast, you know, yep. just the other day. And that was one of the things that we talked about was consistency uh, and uh, and, Colla and uh, collaborations. collaborations. Right. Consistency and collaborations. And with you staying consistent, you had an opportunity to have Elisa Nichols on your podcast with you staying consistent. Right. You've had an opportunity to do some other stuff that we're going to talk about a little bit later on down the line. But right. so talk to us a little bit about Lisa Nichols and how you managed to get that. Well, uh, I use Facebook for business. I'm not on there just having fun. Right. Mm -hmm. um, obviously to connect with friends and stuff like that or stay connected with friends. Sure. Um, but I saw a, a mutual friend of mine post that they were, that Lisa Nichols and, and her colleagues were putting out a spoken word movie um, called Let's Grow. It's like a spoken word movie. I'm like, man, I'm not, I'm not doing anything. Like, you know what I'm <laughs> yeah. I said, okay, spoken word movie. Let me connect. But she, she's too big for me or for, for her to read my DMs, right? Like right. she's she's getting too She many, definitely has someone that many, read, you know? yeah. And so she's working with awesome actors that didn't necess necessarily have a large following like her. So I said they might see my DM. Okay. So I Smart. reached out to the the um what is it? The co star. Co star. Yeah, co star. Writer, co writer and 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 reached out to them and they responded. <laughs> and then I, I brought them on right. to the podcast. You know what I mean? Because uh, they're important too. They're, Absolutely, right? They make big the part of the happen too. Yeah, big part right? of it. You just don't know their names, right? Right. So I interviewed two of them, and they saw the value in what we were doing. Right. You have to. Yes, you can just start but you also have to be providing value. So they saw the value in what I was doing, but it also could help what they were doing with the movie. So they made it happen. They made the connection, said, you need to meet Lisa. I didn't have to say it. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's, it's strategy. And again, just making sure what you have to offer is, is valuable, is of value. You know what? I, I think you're absolutely right about that. I think um, that's one of the things that I learned 
when I, I was I was reading a book by Nehemiah Davison, mm -hmm. um, and he's a, he's really big on social media. And that's one of the things that he said when you're reaching out to influencers and, you know, you want them to be a part of what it is that you're doing. What is it that you can do for them that adds value to what it is that their mission? Is, exactly. You know, and even in the book that I'm reading right now, How to Win Friends and Influence People, right. it literally talks about people. People care about what they care about. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, right. and so, OK, how can I add value to Lisa Nichols and mm -hmm. her spoken word uh, movie that she is about to get mm -hmm. into? Now, I know um, she, what you, you sent her some videos of spoken word artists or something like that. So I, so when you when you have your foundation set right with your YouTube page and your website is set mm -hmm. right um they they can see that you're taking your your business your craft serious yep if you don't they'll see that you don't take your craft and your business serious and so 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 they saw that i wasn't playing with what i'm doing mm -hmm. that's the first thing um um and so i just i think what they did was they checked out the podcast okay because there's a it's a dime a dozen podcasts everywhere but they saw that my podcast lined up with what they were trying to do. Okay. Right? And and their project, the movie started off as a passion project. You know, it, it, it stemmed from um the the um Floyd, um George Floyd, George Floyd. situation yep. and, and the previous all of the other ones. Um but that 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 just came to a head with uh, with Lisa Nichols because she has a son you know that drives and 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 she's terrified for sure. when he leaves the house and all of that right and so and come to find out Lisa Nichols is a closeted poet okay for years she's been a poet but didn't feel as though it you know others would value it like she does mm -hmm. and so now she's in the realm of poetry now and with that project other people are telling her you know i i write poetry too you know what i mean so it, it, it's 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 when they made that project they were saying all right this project is amazing let's get it to the execs i said no that, that's the wrong that's the wrong path to take. I'm uh -huh. telling Lisa Nickel to. Right. <laughs> but, you know, the, the path is through the people. Poetry yeah. is is through the people. Yeah, agreed. Once the execs see that the people are down for it, then they'll get onto it. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And and you know what? That's that's how you're going to connect to to not only the viewers in terms of people who don't write poetry right. but how you're going to connect with the viewers of the people who actually write poetry exactly is that there's going to be a sense of ownership and mm -hmm. you know um people talk a lot about sweat equity when there's when people feel some sense of ownership and they take pride in it man they're willing to do whatever it is necessary to mm -hmm. make sure that that thing is successful Most you know right. even if that uh, even if it uh, you know if their video doesn't make it onto the movie or whatever it might be. Like, I remember one time I mm -hmm. tried out, you know, the concussion movie, Will Smith. Um, they actually filmed that in Pittsburgh, and I tried out to be one of the athletes. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. And I, I didn't make it, but, I mean, I was, I mean, listen, that's neither here nor there. I thought that was going to start my acting career, but it didn't. That's portfolio um, work. Yeah, it, hey, it, it definitely is. And so I still felt a sense of, like, pride in it. Like, mm -hmm. yo, I, I seen that guy there. You know what I mean? Right. Like, yo, I, I seen him there. And so that's the same thing with poetry, you know. Um, I think, uh, you know, with with people submitting these videos, man, and starting mm -hmm. through the people, that's how you get people engaged. That's how you get people involved, man. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that's amazing. Now, we've seen you um, on, or Poet Life on Good Morning DC. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you make those connections with those people? Because I mean, getting on Good Morning DC is not an easy thing to do. Right. Um, how do you make those connections? Um, again, I think the the first thing is having something, uh -huh. right? Is is having something that you're consistently working on, right? And people see you consistently working on it, mm -hmm. and and you're not working on this, you're working on that, you're working on this. You know what I mean, right? Because because everybody has resources, and I post about this often. You know, if you have a resource. 
for your friend John and you see him working consistent consistently, why wouldn't you proactively reach out to your resource and say, hey, my friend John is doing some major things? You would. And people actually do that for me because they see me grinding with three kids, a wife, active in church, and still being consistent, figuring figuring out how to make it work. And and they're like, we, we have to help him. Yeah. When, when people see that you're passionate about it, and people see that you're willing, yeah. other people are willing as well. Exactly. Um, like when I, when the name of the of, of my organization was Young Lungs Motivation, I used to have mm -hmm. a, a saying that you have to be the first to breathe life into your goals and dreams. Is when you're the first, and people will, uh, when you're the first to start breathing, people will assist you in breathing. You know what I mean? When mm -hmm. you start doing the actual work yourself, people are way more willing to help you when they see that, you know what, I'm not going to be the only one putting something into this. I right. know that this person is actually going to, you know, um, to put their best foot forward as well and make this worth my while. Because right. essentially, people want what they're doing, you know, their connection to be uh, worthwhile. Right. Yeah, I had to learn early that, you know, the whole family and friends not supporting you thing. Sometimes that might be the case uh, for whatever reason, but most times it's they want to see you be consistent with something. They know you. Right. They know you're a creative and you have a million ideas. And so a lot of them are waiting for you to move and stay in that lane because think about it a lot of people don't want to put their stamp or their name on someone who is not going to be consistent about it because once they put your name on it and say hey here's my resource and then you hop to something else and then your resource is like what happened to your, your brother right <laughs> you know i thought he was still doing the oh he's doing something else oh okay yeah, you know what that that happens a lot with like that's that's why a lot of people are hesitant to make like references to for people you know what yeah. I mean? because if yeah. i make this reference for you and then it goes wrong who does it look bad on it doesn't exactly. look it doesn't it's not about you it's going to look bad on me because yeah. you know i mean you you are the company that you keep so if mm -hmm. you made a referral to this job saying that johnny would be good for this position and right. johnny never shows up or yeah. johnny gets the position and now he's actually horrible right well how I mean, you made a referral for somebody for what? You know, how well did you really know this person? Yeah, I, I can speak on it because I, I was that person that hopped from one hopped on the next shiny idea. Uh -huh. You know, because there's stages of of an idea in a project. You know, you you get excited and you tell folks, "I'm about to start this," da, 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 and everybody's excited. But when it's time to get that work done, <laughs> it's dry. It's super dry. It's just you in the lab working, and then you get another idea. And you be like, yo, oh, man, this is going to be awesome. And then you let that thing that you were working on that you already said God gave you and to do, but the, the new shiny thing took your attention off of what you were supposed to or be you, doing. Uh, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? During that, during that stage where it's just like work, work, work. Yeah. 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 No, I'm I'm definitely with you, man. It, a lot of people become the jack of all trades and the mm -hmm. master of none. You know, we we look at the things that we think we want mm -hmm. and and we pursue them, forgetting about the things that uh, actually give us passion, the things that we are passionate about. Right. And so I know to, to be doing this for as long as you have been doing it, mm -hmm. man, you have to be passionate about it. Like what? There, there's. Uh, because there's sleepless nights, there's the recording, there's the editing, and like you said, you know, you're you're a lot of this you're doing yourself right now. You know what I mean? Most of um, it. a lot of it you're doing yourself. And so, where where does your inspiration like? Is it what are you getting from helping other people reach their poet? Because my, mm -hmm. the, the the thing that I know about you is you're really selfless in this. Yeah. Because I've I've seen poet life on Good Morning DC, but I haven't seen Kristoff on Good Morning DC. Listen, so yeah. like, where does that come from? Well, I'm not interested in all of this. Okay, I'm just not interested in this light and the lights, the cameras, the action. I'm not interested, <laughs> man. And I would rather to have spokespersons. Yeah. And and uh, you know uh, host to host the podcast and 
Mm-hmm. But and I was doing I was doing that, but I was finding out that people support you and what you have going on, and I was finding out that I was stunting my growth by being in the background. Uh huh. But what validated my my desire to be in the background was um, Russell Simmons. You know how uh, Deaf Poetry Jam, yeah, right. The whole event is going on. Then at the end, all right, y'all have a good night. Appreciate you. <laughs> you know, and that's yeah. running the whole thing. Right, and and you never see him and until I'm, until, until the end. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but he had already built it. Uh huh. So I'm sure at first it was just him, 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 him. He had to be the face, the face, the face. Yeah. And then, but now that he's built it, he's able to sit back. And so I'm in that stage. Okay. Where it's me building it. And so I can sit back and chill and let the folks in, in on, on the stage do their thing. Yeah, absolutely. That, yeah. You know what? That when, That's a great example. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, that you gave. Because, like, I, I never really thought about it that way. Yeah. But, yeah, for real. Like, you literally didn't see Russell until the very end. And you seen him run up there that's on it. the little stage. And be like, hey, that's it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yo, that's a, that's a really good example, man. And I think that. Um, I think that because you're more present uh, in, in, in what you're doing in poet life, I think people, like you said, people are taking it a little bit more serious. And they're um, like, now, now you know that you're in the driver's seat. Right. You know you can push this thing as far as you want it to exactly. go as, and as fast as you want it to go. You know, And what I, mean? I don't have to wait for people. Right. And depend on people. Uh-huh. Right? Because no one is going to treat your baby like you do or love it or cherish it or work hard for it like you will yeah absolutely it's it's difficult to find people who who believe in the vision yeah. as much as much as you do man yeah. um it, we're, we're definitely in a society right now where it's like you know everybody wants to be a boss nobody wants to work on a team mm-hmm. and you know kind, kind of like what what we talked about the other night man in terms of collaboration right man, there, there's enough out here for all of us you know, we can all win. Y- your supporters can support me. My supporters can yeah, support you. I want so, everybody to win. I, I mean, let, when you came on with this. I said, "That's what I'm talking about." <laughs> yeah, and and you know what, man? I I wanted to put this out as mm-hmm. something that you know people can uh, people can witness the growth of a person and of a business uh, of a of a brand, whatever it might be. And this is just an opportunity. Like if I if I can get mm-hmm. you. 250 new views that you wouldn't have gotten right you know what i mean on your own then to me that's a win you know what i'm saying yeah so i mean i I mean absolutely um so we've i've also know uh and and there's so much that i know about you Mm -hmm. just just from watching you know what i mean watching from a, a distance so you also had an opportunity to get poet life featured at the white house yeah, yeah, that was that was in the fighting cancer with poetry days, man. Mm-hmm. And um, myself and uh, Orville the poet were rocking heavy. You know, we still majorly connected. Um, the cancer, cancer is, is is crazy, man. Cancer yeah. is is something that everybody can relate to. In the past, it was just like you couldn't find anybody that knew someone that was diagnosed with cancer but now you can't find anyone who has not been right affected by cancer right so so um with that everybody was just really catching on to that and so this is when uh after justin Islar passed uh we then started a non-profit you know in his name called fighting cancer with poetry and and everybody was just like man whoa that is powerful so so how did the white house happen that was some years ago man but but i think it was just more so me making those inbox messages to people with influence Mm -hmm. those inboxes work those dms work yeah do do you do you have like a template that you're using for these dms or are you just kind of pouring your heart and in, into this message and being diligent 
and what it is that you're saying. Is that kind of what you're doing? Pouring my heart in a short message. No one wants to read a long soliloquy about yeah. anything. I don't care if it's <laughs> cancer or, or whatever it might be, right? It, it's just like a natural message. Um, and it might, might say as such as, you know, well, the first of all, the name itself says exactly what it is. Uh -huh. I believe in titling what your business, what your project, what your idea is exactly what it is. So you don't have to answer a million questions about, so what is that about? It's fighting cancer with poetry. <laughs> <laughs> like li literally the answer, the answer is in the, is in the question. <laughs> but how do you do that? Well, we raise funds and awareness through poetry. How can you fight cancer with poetry? Those two things. That's how you fight cancer. You, people need to know mm -hmm. about the facts. And what if they learn the facts through creativity, which is more attractive than the lecture, the monotone guy yeah. with the bow tie? Yeah. You know? And you, you know what? When... When you say that, man, that's that's one of the reasons why I do poetry is mm -hmm. it's literally for that reason. Like I I was going through a period in my life where I was having a difficult time explaining what my emotions were right. and what I felt in, in, a, in a number of different ways. But songs were always an easy way for me mm -hmm. to say, yo, this is how I feel. I mm -hmm. feel this emotion. And so now with poetry, I literally have an opportunity to express exactly what it is that I feel at any given moment in an artistic fashion. Right. And as long as, and what, what happens is, is I'm able to capture, you know, a specific emotion that other people can now relate to, man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, 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 it literally become like, I don't have to explain to you um, exactly how I feel because you know how I feel right. from this. You know, I wrote a song, a, a poem called "I Like My Music Loud," and it and it says, "Just pay attention to the song. Uh, the words will tell you exactly how I feel. You don't have to ask me." Right. That's good. That's good. And and you said something very important. Um, using your art for for self expression, mm -hmm. and that's what we do for the youth. Um, for Poet Life Academy, uh, we're in about 12 schools teaching kids how to use the arts uh, about to express themselves. And it is absolutely amazing to see them come in um, super quiet, you know, you know, because poetry, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm 12, yeah. 14, 15, 16. I don't do no poetry. Right. You know, but after... The third, fourth, fifth session, they're writing. They you can't get them off the stage because we we slowly infuse it into the natural conversation that we have, right? So we get them to start talking first. That's the hard part. Yeah, that it it, it literally is, and that like. To, so that's the reason why I use poetry and my motivational speaking is because when mm -hmm. kids hear, oh, we've got a speaker coming to see, they oh, man, we got another speaker that's going to come in here and tell us we need to do, 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 right. do we need to do. Right. Oh, my gosh, we don't want to hear this. But when you come in and speak to them and get on their level, they appreciate that so much more because now it's like you're speaking in a language that they understand and that they want to listen to. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So you, you, got, you guys are in 12 schools. Um, what has that experience taught you about, uh, about kids, uh, but then also about the evolution of poetry? Mm. Well, about kids, they need an outlet. Because, especially now, our kids are harboring all of what they're feeling on the inside. And they don't want to talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. Not their parents, not their whoever, you know. And, and they feel like the only way to express themselves is for them to talk. And they don't want to talk. Right. So... So we have an alternative way for them to express themselves. And, you know, we, we, we infuse the rap because that's what they like. Yep. Um, because we have to go there before we get to the poetry because that's what they know and love, which is rap. And but we show them the origin of rap is poetry. Right. Right. 
and, and and you I imagine you've heard in school rap stands for rhythm and poetry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. exactly. <laughs> you know. So it's 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 um it's changing the stigma of poetry and showing them all of what poetry is and by the end of the series of sessions, man, they're on stage dropping the mic like Obama, man. <laughs> like five year olds, six year olds. Yeah. It's crazy. And the parents are like, How did you get my son, my daughter to open up like that? Right, out of their shell to open up man, you know what? I um I was asked to go to a uh oh man, I can't remember the name of the school. Uh, High Rose Academy. Okay. Uh, one of the High Rose Academy schools, and they were uh, they were having a poetry showcase, and um, they the kids were challenged to write poems and to act out these poems in ways that they felt um, you know would give life to this poem. And a lot of the kids, you know, they went, um, you know, they they did these poems and stuff like that. And, you know, they, they did a little bit, but there was this one kid I'll never forget. He was 17 years old. Um, he came out in a jumpsuit, a prison jumpsuit, shackled. All right. At 17 years old, man. And he came and he did this poem and it was a poem that he wrote because he did he didn't know his dad because his dad has always been in jail since he could remember. I think since like four or five years old, his dad has always been in jail. And so he wrote a poem to his dad and then he recorded what he thought would be his dad's response to that poem and then played it over the loudspeaker you know what i'm saying so he he just kind of like sat there like he just he was he was kind of there and i thought man that that was such a beautiful illustration coming from a young man to say like yo like dad i need you i needed you you know uh why did you make the decisions that you made and stuff like that? You know what I mean? I miss. And I thought, man, that that was such a beautiful expression. Have you experienced anything like that where you were just like, yo, I mean, th this this was just beautiful. I don't think you can imagine the words that these students put on paper because it is. You would you. Would, I, I don't know, man. It, they are far beyond their years but a lot of people don't know it because they're not giving a chance. They're not giving a chance. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? And, and without a chance to express themselves and show people what they can do, you won't know it until you're 38. Right. You know? You know, so it's, it's the exposure and the opportunity to discover what you can think because they don't even know until he probably didn't even know that he had it like that right until that opportunity yeah and you know what you know what you're you're probably right because when i when i talked to him mm -hmm. you know and when when we were uh having a conversation you know i was me and a friend of mine we were like asked to help them come up with ideas you know his poem was so good i was like man you gotta I, like, I want you to go deeper with this. You know what I mean? Like, don't be afraid to uh, to, to step out like fur, like so far out of your box, man, that it makes you almost uncomfortable. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that was one of the things that he did. And man, I'm, I'm with you, man. Like a lot of the like we couldn't fathom the things that these young people would write on a piece of paper and how beautiful they could um you just manipulate words right. man and just some of the expressions that they have as well it's like yo i didn't even know you knew that or i didn't even know yeah. you knew what that was mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. um so talk talk to us a little bit about how how do you bat like how do you balance life mm -hmm. and poet life right um are are you have you said you have three daughters and and they're all under six are any of them writing poetry right now are any of them you know have have you done anything uh with the girls or do they show any interest in mm. wanting to get into the poet life so so to, to answer your first question to how do i balance right um creativity you know um business uh, family life, church life, all of it. Um, I had to learn how to prioritize and organize. Um, but also 
reduce. When I say reduce, I had to eliminate TV. Okay. Just think about how much TV one watches. It, <laughs> on average, each week, it's like a full-time job. People watch like 40 hours of TV and don't even realize it. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're at work 40 hours. Uh -huh. then, you work, then you watch 40 hours. That's 80 hours. That's 80 hours. Of, yeah. of life where you're not working on your craft. So mm -hmm. when I eliminated TV, I was like, man, I have so much time now. Right. I have so much time now. So I'm able to take that 40 and chop it up and and prioritize it for my my, my daughters and my business. Uh, when they go to bed at 730, I then spend what an hour or two with the wife mm -hmm. and then go down to the lab and stay up till midnight, one o'clock, and then wake up at six to go downstairs to the in, indoor gym that you created yourself. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's what are the things that I need to do and how can I make them possible in this house so I can continue to be present in my daughter's life? So the second question or answer to the question is, yeah, man, like, that's why it's called the poet life. Like, it's the life I live. It's not something I do. You know what I'm saying? So so they see it and they know it. So when I go on stage, I bring them up with me. Wow. You see what I'm saying? So imagine at that age, like, being engulfed in it. Yeah. They you have no choice but to be creative. It might not be poetry. I don't know. But it's going to be creativity. Right. And and you know what? That's going to develop a, a sense of fearlessness mm -hmm. with approaching whatever whatever else they choose to uh, they, they choose to, mm -hmm. to, to partake in. Like I know for my daughter, one of the things that she loved doing is she loves introducing me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So like she loves to get she's like, Daddy, can I introduce you? And I'm like, yeah. And so she gets up on stage and she's like, ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? <laughs> backpack Jeff and then and then she just likes to get off stage and she loves doing it and so man they're like those little moments like that are literally moments yeah. that kids will always remember um, and that kids take a lot of pride in mm -hmm. like imagine you know <clears throat> being on a stage on, on a huge stage you know what I mean in front of a thousand people or something like that right. and she's the one that gets to introduce you right. you know what I mean that like she's going to remember that experience always. That's going to be something that's going to be powerful. And like you said, mm -hmm. you, you know, you take your daughters with you mm -hmm. when you go to these certain events, man, those are going to be things that they're going to look back on and say, remember when we did this, remember, mm -hmm. remember when we did this, man, and just capturing those moments, man. The America's got talent opportunity. Uh -huh. I was able to incorporate her into that project. And wow. So she's on TV at age five. On the, fin on the finale of 2020's uh, uh, season of America's Got Talent. Really? So, uh, so just rem just imagine the memory she'll have, right? And what that. that what that'll do for her. Her her confidence, man. Yeah. And and you know, with with little girls, man, we have to we have to instill a level of confidence in them at a young age. You know, because with with my daughter, one of the things that um, that we always practice were uh, affirmations mm -hmm. right. for herself. Like I, 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 I told, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I would. Do you do you do affirmations mm -hmm. with your daughters? Tell, tell us, tell us the affirmations that you do with them. Man, um, I am obviously the 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 natural one. I'm beautiful. You mm -hmm. know, I am intelligent. I am creative. Uh -huh. Right, and so I that created that right side of the brain. Right, is it, I work that heavy. Yeah, yeah, you you got to man. So yeah. my my daughter, I have her, uh, I have her look in the mirror and say, "I'm brave, I'm beautiful, mm -hmm. I'm smart, I'm strong. I will have faith in myself. Mm -hmm. If I I will focus on my goals and dreams. I will finish everything that I do with the same attitude that I had at the start. If I fall, I will get back up. If I bend, I won't break. And then I have her yell in the mirror, "I love me," because I need her to love herself. Because when she goes out into this world, when our, when all of our daughters go out into this world, man, they're going to be or anybody in general, right. there are going to be some things that society is going to tell you about yourself. Right. You know that you have to combat and you have to have such a sense of confidence within yourself that it doesn't matter what anyone says about you. Yeah. You will never lose that confidence or that belief in yourself. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. It's important. 
It, yeah, it, it definitely it definitely is, man. Um, so tell us what is next for poet life, man? Where 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 does poet life go from here? What can we expect next from poet life? So we have three pillars, uh, three E's. It's education, um, engagement, and entertainment. Okay. Right. So uh, the engagement it really is to is is B to B, where where it's business to business, where we're reaching out and pitching to different businesses and say, hey, this is what we can do for you, like the Lisa Nichols movie, mm -hmm. right? Where I said, I can't, I, di I didn't want to just say, go through the people and then just leave it at that. I said, let me help you. Let me show you how I can, or we, how we can make that happen. And that's when the calling all poets came about mm -hmm. where I put out a blast to poets around the world to submit poems in relation to the upcoming movie. Right. 50 some odd poets sent in videos based off that movie and they were able to use those poets videos to then be placed on the movie's website hmm. so the poets get exposure hmm. right yeah. but also the movie is uh, they're they're able to use those as marketing and promo right right um, and so, so that's the engagement, working with businesses to, to kind of help them um, garner more eyes to what, whatever they're doing using poetry. Right. That's how you disrupt other industries. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how you build the poetry industry. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So that's the engagement. But as far as the education, it's the Poet Life uh, Academy and Poet Life University to where um, we are taking the podcast episodes and using those topics to create workshops. Okay. Right? Because the podcast is not, we're not interviewing anyone. We're having conversations with people who have value that can share their journey of, of achieving certain um, uh, milestones, goals, achievements. Right. And just like you, you know, um, we're, we're talking about consistency and, uh, collaboration. So you're you're in your episode. You're teaching people how to stay consistent, mm -hmm. how to collaborate with others, so you can go farther and not just faster. Right, right. And uh, the entertainment. We then hire poets to perform at the White House, and right. So it's it's putting people on. It is uh, doing what we said we're trying to do: uplift the poetry community, but also build the poetry industry. And, and you know what, man, you are definitely one of the people who um, are, I mean, just running at poetry like no one that I've ever seen run at poetry, man. Yeah. Uh, and I'm super excited for what uh, 2021 is going has in store for Poet Life, man. Where wh where can people reach Poet Life and, you know, how can how can they connect with you? Because I like the Poet Life gear. You know what I'm saying? You got the mask and stuff like that. I love yeah. it. Um, how can people connect and find Poet Life? So that's that's the other thing. <clears throat> when you have an idea, the first thing you want to do, figure out what that name of that idea is and get everything. The Gmail, the Instagram, the Twitter, <laughs> yeah, everything, right? So no one takes it and then you're like, oh, I can't use it, right? So you literally can find us anywhere and everywhere at The Poet Life. Okay. Um, for the gear, it's poetlifegear.com, um, thepoetlife.com, right? Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, anywhere, man. Like, just put in Poet Life, it'll come up. Put in Poet Life. Poet Life is Googleable. so if, it? You, if you put it, put it in. Do that in. for your brand. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Absolutely. I, I definitely think that's important. So look, man, we're getting to the point of the of the podcast where um, we like to go in our bag. All right. So um, I, I like to always have some special backpacks on display. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I got my, uh, my, my my Tiger King here. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to uh, we, we like to play a little game called um, Less small talk, more genuine conversation. Okay. And so we're just going to ask you some questions. The first round is going to be asking you some questions about 2020. Okay. Um, you know, some of the successes and some of the things that you've learned from 2020. And the only thing that you're going to do is you're going to pick a card from one through six on here. Uh, and this is a this, this is a really 
a, a really fantastic game, man. Um, one of the ones that you can just, you know, play play with the people. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so go ahead and pick a number between one and six. Um, five. Number five. All right. Uh, so the past year in retrospect, what made you laugh in 2020? I guess, uh, I guess all of the memes about COVID. <laughs> okay. You know, uh, I try to find the silver lining in the craziness, uh-huh. you know, um, but also the, um, the, the opportunity in the drought. Yeah. Right. So um, the fact that everybody was home, um, I was able to just, you know, really appreciate the fact that I'm home with my family mm-hmm. and say, all right, I need to laugh more. Yeah. You know, so small things. Absolutely, man. I, I think I think that's a that's a beautiful thing, man. And I definitely imagine that being home more, the kids made you laugh a lot more. You know yeah. what I mean? Having that interaction with them. All right. One through four or six. One. Number one. The past year in retrospect. What was your most exciting experience of 2020? 2020. Um, I think America's Got Talent. Okay. I think that was the most exciting thing that happened in 2020. Um, Brandon Leak is my friend. So it was exciting to see him uh, winning. And when we were able to do that, uh, calling all poets tribute to him, where poets around the country, uh, around the world, sent videos in to encourage him while he was on the show. Mm -hmm. And then for the show to call us to say, can you do that for us? But in three days, (laughs) (laughs) can you redo that on a on a grander scale? Right. Um, That was very exciting. And again, to have my daughter. uh, perform a poem that my wife wrote for her. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was wow, man. Yeah. 2020 was a really good year for, for, for poet life, man, for you, man. For, and being able to witness a lot, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. So let's go uh, two through four or six. 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 All right. What did you want to achieve that uh, in 2020 that you didn't? The fighting cancer with poetry tour. Um, but what we're going to do in 2021 is the virtual tour okay and what i get what i'm trying to get poets to understand is you can become an international poet from your living room Mm -hmm. you you know what i mean because even with the many open mics that are everywhere on instagram youtube um if you come prepared in those open mics and and kill you know just imagine when this is all over everyone in those communities now knows your name right and so maybe you'll become a feature they'll fly you out right right and so it is a matter of perspective changing your thought pattern and oh i'm stuck in the house let me watch more tv (laughs) like look all you see on Facebook now is, hey, what y'all watching? Yeah, a lot, a lot of, hey, what y'all watching? <laughs> Not what y'all creating. It's Come what on y'all now. Watching. Come on now. <laughs> you know? So, okay, so we, you and I, we talked a little bit the other day, too, speaking of, speaking of this, about putting yourself out there. Uh, Clubhouse. Yeah. How, how, how are you using Clubhouse to advance poet life? Because... At, at first, man, when when it first came out, I was like, oh, my gosh, another social media to right. manage, another social media to right. have to, you know, engage in and, and, and do all of these things and keep track of, man. It's just something. This is just another thing, excuse me, that I don't need. Right. Um, but when I got in there and I started, you know, seeing the open mics and stuff like that and the things that, you know, people were doing, I was like, yo, th- like this is this was actually better than I thought it was going to be. Yes. Yes, that was my initial thought at first with the, oh, man, another one. Um, But I kept on hearing so much about it, and people kept on reaching out and saying, hey, Chris, this would be great for the poet life. I was like, okay. But I'm Android. Um, (laughs) That's not going to work for me. So they were like, you got to do what you got to do. So I I, I put a... I put a a calling all iPhones. (laughs) 
reached out to my family and my uncle, who, who's also my pastor, um, gave me his old iPhone. Okay. Right? And so I got on, on, on uh, Clubhouse that night around 8 o'clock and did not go to sleep till 4 o'clock in the morning. Staying on Clubhouse. <laughs> because I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, I was in a, I was in a room with millionaires because I'm not in those rooms where you're just, just in the room, just be in the room. I want to learn, right? So right. I'm in the room with millionaires, and they they were giving people with small businesses or just ideas to pitch their idea or their small business to get a deal or to get um, um, uh, an investment from the millionaires. Mm-hmm. And so I'm listening, and, and, and the millionaires are like, DM me. I, I, I'm going to invest in your business you know to these different people and i had the opportunity to pitch and it was 3 30 in the morning i'm half sleep but i took the opportunity anyway but at the same time um i wasn't super prepared they gave good feedback Mm -hmm. um but you got to know the rules in those rooms yeah you know and and i was because I'm, I'm coming with an unorthodox business. It uh-huh. is. It's poetry, right? Yeah. And, and so I try to make a reference to Amanda Gorman because it just happened the week prior. Right. So you would think that it's fresh. You Dude, know. they fried me <laughs> oh, because no. they said I was bringing in politics into a pitch and in, in, into their room. And I was like, no, I was just making the connection, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I said, so for the next two, three days, I, I, I didn't get on because I, I was a little hurt for a minute, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it was like a thousand people in there, man. Wow, You know man. what I mean? And so, so my little heart was hurting a little bit. So, uh. so I had to build that up again. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, no, but um, it's awesome. So what to answer your question, what we plan to do is to, is to create our own club. Okay. In our own rooms where there'll be a fighting cancer with the poetry room. Nice. Where people will be able to perform their art in that room. That makes it international. That makes it the virtual man. Yeah. You got to look at... It's just, this is... This is these are free, free audience, man. Free, it's free audiences. If you can free. get on, if you can get on the stage where there's a thousand people, six hundred people in a room, man, you got the attention of six hundred people right here. And if you're good, they're gonna follow you. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I, I've been in a smaller room where I've gotten followers because of one poem that I did. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so it it was good. And it's just it's another way to build your network. But it's it it builds it right then and right there. You know what I mean? Like right. with Instagram, yeah. With Instagram, you have to create. And then hope people view it. But if you're in this room, you know that people are make people may not be paying attention all the way, but you know you have the attention of at least half the crowd, the a majority. People that are talking, that are saying stuff, I go straight to their page and follow. Same, same. Automatically, because it's 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 the, your your profile is synced to Instagram. You just go to their profile, click the Instagram, and right. then click follow. Mm-hmm. You know, so so. Um, but you still have to manage your time. With that clubhouse, man, I was like, "Yo, how am I, how am I, how am I going to operate? Like, it's, it, I can't sleep. I couldn't <laughs> sleep that night. Yeah, because they were just giving free information that you you would usually have to pay thousands of dollars yep. for. Yep. And I was just like, "Oh my goodness, this is crazy." But after a while, I was just like, "Man, I I, I need to wean myself off for a little while and." figure out how to incorporate it into my already existing life uh-huh. so it doesn't overpower right and then you'll never get no work done yeah and listen you you would never get any work done i when i when i'm not doing anything or while i'm working i always like to jump into a room and just listen have some background noise and then i start paying attention to something of value that i hear I'm like oh wait, wait i like i like what they're saying there. let yes. me let me listen in um all right so let's look at 2021 um, at going into the future, man. Pick a card, one through six. Six. Number six. All right. What will you do that no one expects from you in the upcoming year? Oh, man. Um, I have to decide whether or not. I have and, to decide. And, and, and if you don't want to share it, I get it. I get it. Okay. Let's, let's, 
Right. Let's 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 pick another one. Right. <laughs> let's let's one time. through five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's an, that's another thing. You gotta be careful with just saying stuff about what you're gonna do. One people ex they're right, waiting, and then if it doesn't happen, they're like, "Oh, what happened?" They, again, right. then you're not consistent, or someone to steal your idea. Yeah, and you and you definitely don't want that. So yeah. I get it. Yeah. Um, what am I grabbing? One, one through six, um, one through five. Five. Number five. All right. With what will you be congratulating yourself on a year from now? So what are you going to be congratulating yourself on December and in, in December of 2021? The growth of the podcast. Okay. The growth of the podcast and the academy. Well, the podcast, the academy, and the gear. I, um, my goal is to get everyone wearing Poet Life. Okay. And um, I figured out some way, even if it's not the clothing, it might be the car magnet to put on your on your bumper. Yep. Yep. You know, that people will, put, and they have been um, getting those and putting them on their bumper just for support. And mm -hmm. they might not even be poets, you know. But for the poets, my question is for them to really to get them tied to the brand is who knows you're a poet? Right. You know what I mean? If you think about it, like, how will someone know you're a poet if they're not at an open mic? Yeah. Walking around with poet life is a poet that, life on is definitely going to tell them. You're a walking billboard. Yeah. Sometimes I forget I have this on. And people are like, oh, so you're a poet. I'll be at a restaurant. I'm like, how did you know that? Oh, oh, oh shoot. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You know, you know? Do, do, do a little something, something. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so, so it's, it's not even... This brand, this brand is so selfless for me. Mm -hmm. It is really for the poets. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I literally created this for the poets because um, th that's the question. Who knows you're a poet? Like, how can you get booked if no one knows you're a poet? Right. You know? So, yeah. Okay. All right. Last one. One through four. One. Number one. Here we go. Uh, let's pick another one. I don't want to hear about that. What advice will you follow in 2021? The same one. Um, stay consistent. Okay. Stay, and you know what, man? That's that's so easily. It's it's so easy to to say that. Easier said than done. Yeah, I, absolutely. And it's it's just so necessary too. You know what I mean? Even though it's very easy to say. You know what I mean? It's so necessary that we must stay consistent, man. And that's one of the things that I've enjoyed about watching you along this journey is that you've stayed consistent. Um, people know, like, mm. it, it, you you can't come into this area, and I'm sure you want to continue to grow it, but you can't come into the D.C. area without knowing of and, and, and talk about poetry without mm. talking about poet life. Yeah. And you've put your name in that conversation, and you've put poet life right. in that conversation, yeah. man. So the goal... You said the D.C. area. The goal is is for it to be global. Absolutely. And with what's happening with poetry rising like it is, mm -hmm. my my goal is to be synonymous. When you say poetry, you think the poet life. Right. You see what I'm saying? And when it comes to engagement, entertainment, and education. So... Um, we, we, we're seeing a lot more poet laureates. Uh -huh. uh, you asked, you know, what 21 looks like, you know, something in relation to that. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to say too much. I got yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I got you. I got you. Some, sometimes sometimes you got to let stuff manifest right. before, you know, you can put it out exactly. to the world for sure. Um all right, man. Look, I I I appreciate you taking some time to come and sit down with us, man, here in our bag. You are definitely a person who is in their bag, man, when it comes to not just poetry, man, but just when it comes to life in general, man. Indeed. Um husband, father, you know, um the work that you're doing at your church, man. Um I hope that people got an opportunity just to kind of get to know who you are because yeah. you 
you spend a lot of your time allowing other people, giving other people a platform. Sure. But I think it's nice for people to kind of get a little bit of insight mm -hmm. in who the guy is that's creating this poet life, who the guy is that is, you know, b behind the the, um, the the brand of poet life. Yeah. man. So I appreciate you for coming on, man. Thank you so much, yo, uh, for doing this. Guys, it's this been another episode of In My Bag with Backpack Jeff. And, you know, we always in our bag.